You hear the music and you know what time it is. It is time for another episode of The Jump Off. I am your host, the KODX Factor, and we are here live in the lounge doing The Jump Off, and we are part of the Game Night Lounge Media Network, and all the guests that appear on this show and feature shows are part of the Game Night Lounge Media Network as well. I want to take the time to thank all you guys for tuning in and listening, however you may be listening to us, whether we are getting you through your workout, whether we are getting you through your run, your trips to work, back home from work, whatever the case may be, whether we're in your office, and however you may be listening to us, whether it's through YouTube, uh, through on your laptop, computer, your iDevice, your Android device, however the case may be, we thank you guys for tuning in and we greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> Please feel free to comment and on any of our episodes that we have, if you'd like to be included on any of the topics that we bring up, uh, I will be happy to bring them up as well. Just please make sure you comment on either the show itself or on our YouTube videos of these shows as well. Uh, we pay attention to all of those. So you have many different avenues you can get in contact with us, and we greatly, greatly appreciate it. So we're going to get right into it this week. There was actually a lot of stuff to kind of go on, <clears throat> but I'm going to touch on just a couple of things here. Last week we talked about uh, parent responsibility when it comes to especially video games or entertainment mediums. We also touched on the State of Decay 2, which had launched that previous week. There was a couple games that launched last week, one of them being Dark Souls Remastered for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The Switch version, version was delayed until, I believe, December, November, December, something like that. And we also got our hands on the PlayStation 4 exclusive Quantic Dream titles, Detroit Become Human. I will touch on Detroit Become Human just a little bit later on in the show, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of feedback. Our review for the game is up on our YouTube channel so and our website, so make sure you check it out. Just go to our YouTube channel at The Game Night Lounge and check out the Boomy Factor review show for Detroit Become Human. But there is one thing I wanted to do, uh, that I definitely wanted to talk about today and take a little bit of time to discuss and kind of open the floodgates a little bit because it's been talked about by a lot of people and it seems like people are starting to get angry about it and getting upset and <clears throat> look, I, I just want to have like a healthy debate about it. I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm talking about the Battlef Battlefield 5 scrutiny that is that is taking right now uh ever since the reveal from a week ago we talked a little bit about the reveal last week and how it was revealed and stuff like that so but there was a lot of backlash to the game not so much for how it looks or gameplay wise or what's included with it but more so about the player choice for female playable characters in a world war ii drama game and I just completely was dumbfounded by the some of the reaction from quote unquote fans and how they were upset because of the use of female characters in the game. Like, is this really an argument? Like, is this something that we really have to take into consideration whether we're going to buy the game or not? And look, and the in the head developer for Dice, and the developer behind Battlefield, Oscar Gabrielson, went on to Twitter and he did say, "We want Battlefield Five to represent all those who were part of the greatest drama in human history, and give players, you the players, choices, and the ability to choose and customize the characters that they want to play with." whether that's male or female. But fans were upset because of the quote-unquote realistic inclusion of women fighting in World War II. I don't, I don't understand how this is an argument. Like, is this something you really feel you have to make public and have to voice your opinion on? I've seen comments from people out there that were highly upset because of the use of females in a Battlefield game. Not so much because it's a Battlefield game, but more so because of the setting it's in, World War II. Look, I'm sorry, 
But the first thing, and, and EA touched on this, and Dice touched on this, and I'm, I, I give them applause. I give them applause for what they said. Their main focus, aesthetics aside, is for the game to be fun. That's the first thing. Our games are going to be fun. They're going to be inclusive. And on top of that, they're going to be diverse. They, they plan to push boundaries and deliver unexpected experiences. Look, out of all the Battlefield games I have ever played, <clears throat> how many of those games, even for Battlefield 1, when it took place in World War I, had experiences in it that were like, okay, that's a little far-fetched. I don't see that taking place in World War I. How is that any different <clears throat> than portraying a female character in Battlefield Five? To me, it's, it's a bunch of people that are looking for something wrong with the game, that are just looking to poke fun at this, at this particular game. Why? I don't know. And the only thing that they can come with was the inclusion of female fighters in World War II. Look, <clears throat> I'm, I'm a huge history buff. I love history. I always have, ever since I was little. And I don't look to Battlefield or any other video game for that matter, as my history lesson. I look for it as an experience. <clears throat> I turn. Something that is in a certain setting, but doesn't have to be exactly the same. That's the whole point of a video game. Yeah, there's going to be exaggerations. There's exaggerations in everything. Take Call of Duty for that, for, uh, for example. Even Battlefield 1, those were not all in line with what happened in those wars. Not everything was exact. They weren't. But people are getting upset because of the authenticity of female fighters. Are you that sexist? Do you have, do you have that mindset that women are so beneath even being... Even in a military game, there are female fighters and females in our military today that are fighting on the front lines, giving their lives for our freedoms here. So why is it a problem then as it is now? Because they weren't, quote unquote, technically fighters in World War II? So what, females, while World War II was going on, did absolutely nothing? They just kind of sat and watched the war take place? No, they got involved on different levels, on many different levels. Quite honestly, the backbone of any war is going to come from females. Even if it is, even at that point, it was just strictly men fighting. A lot of the backbone, a lot of the back end stuff was females. You can't discount that. So why get upset when a, when a company makes a game that's depicted in a particular era? Why give them crap because they decided to include females as fighters as well? And you can choose who you want to fight as. Then people were upset that they were actually on the cover art. Who cares? Who cares? It's a cover art. It's a female on a cover art. Who cares? If you go into these type of video games, Battlefield, Call of Duty, and you're looking for a history lesson, why? Why don't you do something and open up a history book? Open up, hell, you can open up Google and look up history and what happened. Read it yourself. Become familiar with it yourself. If you're wanting 100% 100% authenticity, be a history buff. Read on it. Don't go to video games and look and look for a history lesson. That's not what they're there for. They're not there to give you a history lesson. They're there to kind of give you an experience that may take place within that certain period of time. It's not going to all be exact. It's not supposed to. 
These are the same fans that I guarantee you probably gave uh, EA crap about with Mass Effect 3. Yeah, I'm going to keep on going back to that because fans were upset because of how the game ended. I'm sorry. You didn't like what we presented for the ending. I'm so sorry. But that's the ending we created. That's the one we wanted. It's the studio that's behind it that is giving their vision. It's the females that work at EA and DICE that were giving their vision. So why not include females into a Battlefield game? Even as a playable character, who cares? If you don't want to be a female character, play a male character. Why don't you look into the rest of what Battlefield 5 is going to deliver instead of picking, picking something like this? The one that makes you look sexist. If that's how you want to perceive yourself, by all means, keep on jibber-jabbing. The rest of us that are including everybody, that are for everybody, we don't care. Keep on flapping your gums. You don't want to play the game? Fine. There's going to be millions of other players that are. If it bothers you that much, don't play it. You will not be missed. I promise you that. If you think that there's a million of other people out there that think the way you do, trust me, you're highly mistaken. It's a small group. And if that whole small group of yours walks away from Battlefield 5, so be it. I can guarantee you EA can care less. There's still going to be millions of other players that are going to be playing this game and that are going to enjoy it and care less about the 100% authenticity to a World War II game. <clears throat> like, Battlefield is a sandbox. It has always been about playing the way you want to. This is directly direct quote from the, uh, the president of EA. I'm probably not say president, EA. <clears throat> he said, like, it's like, Trying to attempt to fit three players on a galloping horse with flamethrowers. Is that authentic to the time period? When did you read about that in the history books? But you didn't have a problem with it. But with Battlefield Five, you get a chance to play with whoever you want. This is hashtag everyone's battlefield. Big kudos to DICE. They didn't give in. They, the small group of criticism that came with that, they just laughed it off and said, whatever. And they should. And for those of you that are against this game because of that very reason, you don't deserve to play it. Go back to something else. There are plenty of games out there that are featured around historic events that touch on things differently. Wolfenstein's a whole different... If people want to bring up Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein to me is like an alternate reality. You can't really include that into a game that's considered history because it's not. I mean, it, it's futuristic. It's sci-fi. It has gone that way. It is just... It's an alternate reality, alternate history. And there are books on that. They're, they're fiction. But if you have a problem... With this game, because of that very reason, you like I said before, you do not deserve to play it. Just don't, please don't pick it up. Because I don't, I don't want to hear the comments about it at all. There's so much they're doing with this game. I think it's going to be, uh, to me, I think it's going to be phenomenal. I think it looks great. I think it's going to play great. The fact that they put out really, really early on, there are no loot boxes. I think EA's starting to kind of learn its lesson a little bit. Not fully, but a little bit. There's no loot boxes. There's no more premium pass. So buying that $50, $60 premium pass is done with. The content's coming to you anyway. I'm telling you right now, there's so much they're doing with Battlefield 5 that I'm looking forward to, and I think the game is going to be excellent. And if you miss out on the game because of your feelings about this female player being included... So what? I feel sorry for you. 
if you're that sexist about it. And people say, well, no, I'm not being sexist. I'm just, I look at, I look at history. Then read a history book. Don't go to video games for that. If you want the true history, read it. Open. Don't go popping in your Xbox or PlayStation disc hoping to get history from it. That's not what it's for. Anyway, that that's all I have to really really talk about as far as that as far as that goes. I I'm not really going to take the time to indulge some of those sexist people out there that have problems with this because that's how they feel. Look, I'm sorry if you feel that way. I I, I really I I feel sorry for you. You probably don't have a female at home anyway, and it shows why because you feel that particular way. Don't care. Um, I'm going to play the game. Millions of other players are going to play the game. They're going to enjoy it. It's going to be probably one of the better. I'm predicting probably one of the better games of 2018. It's going to be kind of hard to beat um, God of War, though. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to now talk just a little bit about uh, Detroit Become Human. I've got asked from a few people my thoughts and opinions on Detroit Become Human. The review for the game is up on our YouTube channel, so you can check that out. We gave the game... Four out of five, I believe. Four golden poopies. I believe that's what we gave it. <clears throat> we'll double check that here in a second. Yeah, four golden poopies. Okay, there we go. So we gave the game four golden poopies out of five. And look, Detroit Become Human is a great game. Very, very heavy story driven. If you're into that game, if you're into that type of game, it plays very, very much like Indigo Prophecy. Heavy Rain. Beyond Two Souls. These are all from the same developer. They follow the same aesthetic. The same blueprint. You have to be a fan of that genre. If not, you're not going to like it. But it's very, very heavy story driven. Heavy on the quick time events. To me, it is a, it's a, it's a great, it, it flows like, it flows like all their other games, flows like a movie. <clears throat> You can sit back, you can enjoy it for what it is, and what it delivers, the story that it's telling. And honestly, the story that they're telling is so relevant to today, it's almost scary. It's a look into the future. So, it, te so technically in the game, you play, as, you, you play three separate stories that end up intertwining with each other. Three separate stories featuring three separate androids. One's a detective. One's a caregiver, and uh, one's a maid. That's uh, Cooper, the detective, Marcus, the hand, uh, the uh, yeah, the uh, takes care of the older guy, and then you got Kara, who takes Tara, Tara Kara, takes care of the he's she's the maid, <clears throat> the care the caregiver. That's what I was thinking about for Marcus. But you follow these, these three particular androids because they are integral to the storyline. But how their stories intertwine is just as integral. It's, it's really, really cool and neat how they intertwine these three storylines, much like the way they kind of did with Heavy Rain, if any of you have played Heavy Rain before. It's got the twist. It's got the turns. There are many different avenues this game can go. So if you think you've seen everything in one playthrough, uh-uh. You've got to play it at least a couple more times to get the full vision. Because each choice you make takes you down a different path. And how do we know that? It's because at the end of each chapter you play, it gives you a breakdown, almost like a, uh, a timeline of the way you went and the way you could have gone. The way you could have gone will always be locked until you unlock it later on. And those are all, and those are all going to be based on how you play the characters, the decisions you make. Your decisions can also get people killed. Your main characters can be killed by the decisions you make. That's why, to me, that these games are so intriguing because it takes so much of your own personality and puts them into this game. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go too much into how the stories intertwine, how they interact with each other. Because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't played the game yet. But I will say this. 
And the, and the reason why I, so, I say it's so relevant to today that it's scary is because look at racism in our country right now and where it's at. People being vocal about a particular race. Our own president's doing it. And the news that just hit about Roseanne Barr, it, it's out there, it's vocal. Twitter has given us that avenue to do that. <clears throat> Facebook, Instagram, these, all these social media platforms have given people with these thoughts in their minds, big mouths to talk. And now they're fully, they're fully putting it out there. This game kind of touches on that just a little bit, except it doesn't really take race as much of an equation. But instead, androids are, are, the, are the hated race, essentially, in this game. And, and look at the parallels. Look at the parallels between today's society and this particular game in the year 2034. People hate androids. They fear them. They're not allowed, they're not allowed in certain establishments. They're mistreated. They're cursed at all the times. They're hit. They're abused mentally and physically. There's a huge distrust for them. And it brings in this interesting parallel between that and our world we live in today. Look at how most of, most of this country fears African Americans, Hispanics, Muslims, what other ethnicity you are. It's such a unique parallel that it kind of it kind of shakes you up a little bit. You look at it like you're playing this game, and I want to know, just honestly, from any of our African American, Hispanic, Asian, <clears throat> our listeners out there that are just the different genders, ge uh, the different ethnicities, I want to know your feelings when you were playing this game. If you did, how you felt watching some of these these three particular characters interact with other people and how they were treated because all three are treated differently they're treated differently but treated the same by the world around them if that makes any sense if you play the game you'll understand what I'm talking about how you felt as a player watching these androids go through what they were going through with the outside world and around them and if you highly are upset by what they were going through, I want you to look at how that pertains to today. Do you feel that people today are treated that same way because of who they are or what they are? It raises, it raises a whole co topic of conversation. And I wonder if the folks over at Quantic Dreams did that on purpose. Like, they wanted to, to create this conversation. They brought it, to, like, it came, it came through to me. I don't know if it came through to many other people or people that reviewed the game or whatnot, but it came through to me. That's why I'm bringing it up in this show. Did it come through to you? Did you see it this way? Were you watching, and I'll, and I'll take this as an example. In one scene, one of the androids is so mentally abused because of what she is. And then it turns physical. And if you take her out of the, of the game, remove her character from the game, and replace her with an African-American, an Asian, a Hispanic, whatever ethnicity, and replace her with somebody like that, would you see the parallels? Some of you may, some of you may not. Some of you are going to be like, no, that's, that's completely different. Those are, those are real life people today as opposed to androids that don't have feelings. Does that make it any different? Think about it. Just because someone may not have particular feelings towards something, does that make it any different to, to treat them differently? Think about that. If you leave this podcast today and you think about anything that I talked about today, and there's a couple of key issues, the females at Battlefield 5, 
and the the parallels between today's society and the android world that is portrayed in Detroit Become Human. Do you guys see the parallels as I did? Or I do? And the game is great. It's it's a fantastic game. It's got a great storyline to it. It could definitely, right now, as it stands at this very moment, could be in the top 10 of 2018. Sony's doing it big, man. Sony's doing it real big this year. They got God of War and then they got this one. Both of them. And God of War is in the top two right now. Well, technically right now, number one until the fall kicks in, but it could potentially drop one spot. But it's going to be in the top three, I guarantee you, by the end of the year. Detroit will be in top ten, no question, by the end of the year. It's a good game. It's a great game. If you like that kind of gameplay, I beg you to try it. If you don't, if you want to find out the type of game it is, go to the PlayStation Network and go download Beyond Two Souls. It's a game that plays very similar to this, not the exact same, but the stories are vastly different. And that way you'll get an idea of how the game plays and if you like that particular genre of game. It's free right now, at least until this weekend. So you have the time to go do it, to go download it. It's free. Give it a play. See what you think about it. I don't know, but that's my opinions on the, the Detroit Become Human and my thoughts on Battlefield Five. Um, I keep on putting off Call of Duty. I've been wanting to talk about that, and but things just keep on... <laughs> Fans of video games keep on giving me more things to get riled up about. And, you know, hey, hey, it's content for the show, so I can't really complain. I can complain what they're complaining about. But they're giving me content to talk about, so I really can't fault them for that. But I, I want to take time. I want to thank you guys for listening. I will get to Call of Duty. Trust me, before E3 and all that stuff happens, I will talk about it. I also kind of want to talk about the new Pokemon game that was announced. The two new Pokemon games that were announced yesterday by the Pokemon company look phenomenal. I actually kind of look forward to talking about those talking about those for a little bit. Um, so we got a lot to try to get to before E3 kicks off in just what, a week, week and a half, two weeks, two weeks. We're two weeks away from E3, everybody. All the big stuff that we're going to find out is going to be coming out here really, really soon, even though it just seems like every day I turn turn my Twitter account on, there's a new game being announced. Bethesda just did it with Fallout 76. Good job not waiting until E3, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but I want to thank all you guys for listening. All of our listeners, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to either either in the iTunes store or the, uh, the Google Play store. We are on um, we are on all kinds of different podcast avenues, podbean.com. We're in a lot of different places right now. You can subscribe at any time. Comment, like, give us reviews. We would greatly appreciate it. If you want to be a part of the conversation, please either shoot us a DM on our Twitter handle, which is at Game Night Lounge. My personal Twitter handle is at KODX Factor. Or you can visit us on our website at www.gamenightlounge.wordpress.com. We are also on YouTube at the Game Night Lounge, and we are—I mean, we're, Twitter already gave that, YouTube already gave that. We're we're everywhere. We're on Facebook at the Game Night Lounge. This at Game Night Lounge for everything. Uh, so make sure you give us a comment, like, comment, subscribe. We will greatly appreciate it. Our YouTube channel has all of our Let's Play videos from everything we've been playing, um, as well as our dynamic duo with me and my son. We play a lot of uh, kids' games. That's on there as well. All of our reviews are up there as well, so you can check out our reviews anytime you like. I would greatly appreciate it. So I am KODX Factor. This is The Jump Off. We are part of the Game Night Lounge Media Network. All the guests that appear on this show and future shows are part of the Game Night Lounge Media Network as well. And until next week, everybody, I am KODX Factor and game on.